Hey, Robert Nauer of Robert Nauer Unfiltered here once again, strictly for a piece about the two military members that were recently arrested by the Defense Criminal Investigative Service, NIS, and the FBI for espionage treason against America. This is only within the last two weeks. There are, it's very rare for enlisted or officers, but it has happened to commit espionage against their own country, country that has taken them in, taken their families in. These two members that were arrested were from Chinese families. And although they were born here in the United States, which then also in the military would provide them access once cleared for uh, classified information, what the typical American doesn't understand and most of our population is that Chinese are different. Chinese people, whether they're born here in the United States or born there and immigrated here, they all pretty much owe their allegiance to their home country of China. It's something about the culture. Now, I had a friend in Washington, D.C. when I was a Fed, and uh, she worked with me in government contracting. And she was a very nice person, but she told me something one day when we, we used to have these long conversations, and she said, you know, this is what she said, and I've often... Uh, told people they should look into her. But she said to me, you know, one day China is going to control you, America. Ch China is going to not only control you, meaning America, but we are going to dictate to you what you will do. And I was like, whoa, I was really, I didn't say it like that, but I was really taken aback by what she said. I said, what do you mean by that? And she goes, look at how far we've come, meaning China, and advanced so quickly since China was opened up to trade and to the rest of the world, all because of that shithead Richard Nixon. And uh, she said, as a result, we are the dominant. We have always been the dominant country in the entire planet. And we are going to be that for the rest of millennia. I was like, wow, this is coming from an Americanized Chinese immigrant who now works for the federal government. And she basically said the same kind of thing that Khrushchev said, we're going to bury you. It's kind of a narcissistic philosophy. But now that I look back on that conversation with this Chinese immigrant, now a citizen in government, I can understand the mentality of any Chinese, whether they were born here or born there and immigrated. And thus, the motivations for why these two Navy and Marine Corps enlisted committed espionage and treason against their country is because of the allegiance that they owe, as well as there's typically three things that cause people to commit espionage and treason. Sex, the availability of it because they're lacking in it, money, because they need money and money is the root of all evil and money is what motivates people in a lot of cases. And also the final thing that you often don't think about. The third thing is vengeance. Vengeance? Yes, vengeance against somebody who has wronged them or a country who has wronged them in their mind. So in this particular case, I believe you're gonna find out if you follow their cases, it's that money and vengeance were the two motivators for these two Americanized Chinese military people who committed treason against the United States. Vengeance because typically 
when you are wronged, you want to do something that will hurt the people or the institution that wronged you. I know I felt that way before. I even felt that way with my own government at one point in time when I was a whistleblower trying to do the right thing. I was so angry at the government that I wished there was a way I could have done something to get back at them. Eventually that anger went away, but for many it does not. And so consequently, you have the Chinese spies who were here in the United States offered these two individuals lots of money, thousands of dollars, to commit the espionage, provide them with trade secrets and classified information um, that they had access to, and also because of vengeance. Maybe it was that they weren't getting promoted in the military as fast as they thought that they should. Maybe it's because they thought, because they were Chinese, that they were exceptionally uh, better than most Americans serving in the military. Maybe they felt they were more worthy of a promotion or worthy of praise and their supervisors were not giving them praise or their military supervisors were making fun of them or whatever the case may be, it was a vengeful kind of action that they did. But also the spies that coordinated their efforts with these two American Navy and Marine Corps enlisted they find your weakness. They find your weakness, whether it's a Russian spy, an Iranian spy, a Chinese spy, they will look to your weakness. And whatever your weakness is, that is what they will exploit, along with money and or the need for sex. It's probably a lot harder to manipulate a woman than it is a man because of the sexual issue. But even women could be motivated by money. But I think, again, if you follow this case and Google it, uh, the Chinese Navy and Marine Corps individuals that were both enlisted, and they hadn't been in the military all that long, you will find, once they uncover it, that it was money and vengeance that motivated them to provide the information to the Chinese sources, the spies that were in America. Now I'll also say that about spies. Uh, America, the United States does a very bad, I would say a horrible job vetting employees. Lockheed Martin, uh, where I worked with the Defense Contract Management Agency was a horrible kind of employer and, and, and many are. The University of Central Florida in Orlando is a horrible, horrible institution at properly vetting its professors and people, immigrants, from China and the Middle East that it put on federal military grants for research, whether it was research with NSF or DARPA. Um, there were literally people on UCF con grant contracts, and I'll say the word grant versus contract, that were claimed to be already cleared for classified information. The professors who wrote up the grant proposals lied under oath. I hereby certify that everything I said in here is true under penalty of perjury and they perjured themselves and uh, pretty much the government, federal government did nothing about it. Now eventually I made calls about that and I think NSF at one point actually did shut it off because I called the hotline and I also called the DOD hotline a number of years ago about it. And shortly thereafter, um, a lot of that were dealing with federal grants uh, took a big turn, if you know what I mean. So I don't believe that the United States, especially universities, and even the Department of Defense, um, I do not believe they do the proper job in vetting people who are gonna have access to classified information. They basically do a basic NACI check, unless you're gonna get a TSI, top secret, or compartmentalized, then you have to have a polygraph. 
Personally, my personal opinion is everybody who has secret and or above access should all be given polygraphs. That would be a proper vetting. And those polygraphs need to be given annually. And for TSIs, they need to be given quarterly. We don't do that. And I think this is the downfall that makes America vulnerable, is that businesses that deal with the federal government, DOD, and military people are not properly and continually, the word continually, vetted by our institutions. If we did that, there would be less opportunity for terrorists, less opportunity for espionage, less opportunity to commit treason against the United States, because we would better be able to hone in on those individuals that have red flags popping up. We also need to look into their bank accounts and see. Now, part of that's probably how they were able to indict the two enlisted military members for espionage is because all that money was put into their bank accounts. What a bunch of fucking idiots they were, right? But, um, it happens all too often in America. In China, in Iran, and other Russia, if they committed espionage, and the reason that no, very few people do commit espionage, they will execute them immediately and summarily. So therefore, think about that. That's food for thought for today from Bob. Bob out.